Welcome everyone. Thank you for participating in the eighth one tech webinar. My name is Jimmy Seo, clinical specialist at one tech and today's host. Today's presentation title is Sandro Dio for various indications. And speaker is Dr. Ashwa Patai, who is a visiting professor of dermatology at Seged University in Hungary and vice president of the European Society for Lasers and Energy Based Devices. Today's main topic Sandio Duo is a long post laser system with two wavelengths, 755 and 1064 nanometer wavelengths. You can see the specifications on the slide. The special feature of Sandio Duo is hybrid mode, which is the uh, function to sequentially rotate two wavelengths within a short time, either way of 755 and 1064 nanometer, or in vice versa. Before turning the time to, over to Dr. Ashraf, I'd like to quickly inform you that feel free to ask any questions using a question box in your control panel. Uh, we will have time to answer the questions at the end. Hello, Dr. Ashraf. I'm glad that we have you for today's webinar. Hello, Jameen. Uh, it's my pleasure to be uh, participating in that webinar. I hope uh, it's going to hold some uh, uh, beneficial and good information uh, for the audience. And I would like to thank one um, uh, technology laser company because of their innovations. I have been working with one lasers for the past um, 10 years and they are always trying to improve the performance of their machines and come up with uh, newer and advanced technologies and parameters to help the practitioners to perform uh, their tasks in a much more professional way. So again, I would like to thank One Technology for their innovations. For today, we are uh, talking about Sandro Dual system, which is uh, having uh, two wavelengths, the Alexandrite 755, as well as the NDX 1064, uh, plus the hybrid mode where we can select uh, to uh, have one pulse composed of the two lasers in the same pulse. And also we can choose to start with the Alexandrite first, followed by the NDX, or the NDX first, followed by the Alexandrite, which is uh, excellent uh, for various indications and in many advantages, as we are going to see throughout uh, the presentation. So we are going to have three sections of that presentation, the system specifications and features, which we already mentioned uh, previously, uh, and the NDEG applications and the Alexandrite applications. So if you look at the combination of uh, the two wavelengths, uh, as we can see, we can achieve very good laser assist hair reduction in all skin types, whether it's from one to four or even three to six. Uh, we can also do the facial and leg veins uh, uh, with the combination of the two wavelengths. We can do laser facial or facial rejuvenation, as well as the epidermal pigmented lesions. If someone selects to go for the Alexandrite only, then we can do the laser hair removal in skin types up to four, and we can do the epidermal pigmented lesions. If someone selects to get the NDEG uh, alone, then we can do hair removal in all skin types. We can do facial and leg veins, and we can do the non-ablative rejuvenation. So it's up to the physician or the practitioner or the clinic to go for NDEG only or Alexandrite only, or they can got, uh, get the Sandro Dual where they have both the options in order to treat the whole range of applications. Uh, we are going to focus uh, today on the four main applications, the hair removal, pigmented lesions, skin rejuvenation, and vascular lesions. However, I'm going to give some hints about some other applications you can achieve with uh, the, the, the two lasers. So if you look at the absorption uh, uh, curve, for the different wavelengths, we all know that this is called the absorption curves, where we have the different chromophores of the skin, the melanin, the hemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, which we target to treat vascular lesions, and the water, which we target for rejuvenation, whether it's non-ablative rejuvenation when the absorption is low, or the ablative uh, rejuvenation and resurfacing when we are using wavelengths which are highly absorbed by water and they cause ablation. For the melanin, this is what we target, this is what we look at, uh, when we would like to treat epidermal pigmented lesions, and that's why the Alexandrite is a good uh, wavelength to treat epidermal pigmentation. 
but also this is what we are looking at when we would like to achieve laser assist hair reduction because melanin is the chromophore in this case. So when we look at the NDEG wavelength, we can see that it's absorbed by melanin, so we can use it to treat hair. It's absorbed by hemoglobin, so that we can use it for treating vascular lesions. And it is absorbed by water, and that's why we can use it for non-ablative rejuvenation. If we look at the alexandrite, we'll see that it's mainly absorbed by uh, melanin. That's why we can use it for treating epidermal pigmented lesions because the absorption here is high, but also we can use it for laser assist hair reduction. So that's why the combination of those two we have learned, the alexandrite as well as the NDA can uh, treat large variety of indications in our skin. So we start with hair removal, and if you look at the hair removal wavelengths available, they started with the ruby laser, and they chose the ruby laser because it has very high absorption by melanin. So that's why they picked the ruby as one of the first lasers used for laser assist hair reduction. And uh, when that happened, it was uh, very effective, very efficient in treating uh, patients with skin type one and two. But when they tried to treat darker skin patients, they found that there is a lot of problems and complications because there is strong competition between the epidermal melanin and the follicular melanin. So the epidermal melanin was absorbing that laser because of the high absorption uh, and cause some hyper or hypopigmentation or some superficial burns of the skin. And the energy left in order to target the hair follicle was low. So that's why the ruby was only good for skin types one and two. And that's why the alexandrite laser with a wavelength of 755 was developed in order to tackle uh, darker skin types. So the alexandrite can be used in patients up to skin type four. And the advantage of the alexandrite is that it's going to be effective while the hair is thick, but also when the hair becomes thinner with the subsequent treatment, the alexandrite is still going to be very effective. And then they developed the diode and the NDA laser to cover the scope and treat the darker skin types. However, we have to be aware that uh, those wavelengths are uh, safe in dark skin uh, because of less absorption by melanin. However, when it comes to fine hair, there are some challenges. They are not going to be as effective as the alexandrite. That's why the combination of alexandrite and NDA would make sense. And the NDA is more superior than the diode because the NDA is multiple in applications. So we can use it in other applications. Uh, than the hair removal. Diode is mainly for hair removal and the other applications are not uh, existing very much. They are not very, it's not very effective in treating other applications, whereas the NDA can work on other applications very effectively. That's why one technology was very smart in selecting a device, which includes those two wavelengths, the NDA 1064, as well as the Alexandrite. One of the things which I would like to point at is that when the wavelength is less in absorption by chromophores, it penetrates deeper. So that's why the NDA laser is one of the deepest penetrating wavelengths. So that's why we can use it for treating some deep vascular lesions and for hair follicles, which are deep in the skin. So this is the beauty of the NDA. The other thing is that because of the less absorption by melanin, so the interaction with the epidermal melanin is minimal. So even if the patients are tanned, or having dark skin, the NDA is still uh, considered one of the safest wavelengths to be used. So uh, that's why it's a very good combination to have NDA and Alexandrite in your device. A very common question uh, rises, if I have a system which is having both NDA and Alexandrite for hair removal, which one should I start with? So the answer for that is usually I'm getting is the skin type. If the skin type is dark, I choose the NDA. If the skin type is fair, then I use the Alexandrite. However, my answer is number one is the hair thickness. So if you have any skin type, if you have a patient with skin type fair or dark or whatever, you have to look number one at the hair thickness. So if the patient is having thick hair, then the NDA is going to be the ideal wavelength to start with. Because if the patient is having fair skin with thick hair, the NDA is going to be safe and effective, deeper in penetration. So the remission in between the sessions will be longer. If the patient is having dark skin with thick hair, then the NDA is required because of the safety. So in any way, if the patient is having 
thick hair, start with the end egg, regardless of the skin type. And then number two is the skin type. So after the hair becomes thinner, then if the skin type is one to four, then you can shift to the alexandrite. If the patient is having dark skin, this is a challenging situation. Uh, when the hair becomes finer in dark skin, you have to have the enough experience and skills in order to be able to use the ND egg in this case safely and effectively. At that time, we can adjust the pulse duration. We can lower the pulse duration. We can use a smaller spot size and increase the fluence with very good cooling. And in this case, it's going to be safe and effective. But as I said, treating fine hair in dark skin is a challenge where you need some experience in order to do that effectively and safely. But anyway, with the combination of Alexandrite and NDL, you are able to cover most of the uh, hair types and skin types uh, safely and effectively. The other complaint or other issue which uh, always rises is the fact that the NDL laser is painful. Uh, many colleagues are commenting and telling me that NDL laser is painful. Uh, and why is painful? Because with low absorption, we have to increase the fluence. And with low absorption, the laser will penetrate deeper. So high fluence with deep penetration, this will lead to pain. So that's why the ND egg is known to be a little bit more painful. However, there are some ways which we can do in order to minimize the pain. Like, for example, to decrease the fluence when the hair is thick. If we have, if we are treating patients who is having thick hair, there is no point of uh, using high fluence, low fluence, maybe 20 or 25 joules will do a good job because the absorption of the thick hair is very significant with minimal pain at that time because we are using low fluence. And then when the hair starts to become thinner, this is when we might need to increase the fluence gradually, but the, the pain is not going to be higher more because the absorption is already low. Uh, number two, we can use small spot size in sensitive areas. For example, if we are treating the upper lip, the upper lip, the hair follicles are superficial. They are not deep. So at that time, there is no need to use a larger spot size like 12 or 15. Uh, if we are using a small spot size, like maybe seven, maximum 10, then the, F, the treatment is going to be effective and the pain is going to be much less. So always, try to use a smaller spot size in sensitive areas to minimize the pain. Of course, using effective cooling is very important to minimize the pain. And also, uh, one technology uh, is giving us another option, which is the hybrid technology, where if we are using the two wavelengths together, then we can use low fluence with Alexandrite, low fluence with NDAG. In this case, the fluence required with the NDAG is going to be much less, and this will minimize the pain. If we did any or all, or all of those uh, 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 steps, then the pain associated with the laser in general is going to be minimal. The pain associated with the NDAG in particular is going to be uh, less than the pain associated with any other wavelengths. So this is, this is what we have to keep in mind in order to uh, minimize the, the pain. The second indication which I, which I would like to cover is uh, treating or using the laser to treat vascular lesions. And of course, the, in this case, we are going to be using the NDAG laser. Uh, the NDAG laser is known to be uh, uh, one of the deepest lasers to penetrate. It can penetrate up to eight millimeter into the tissue, whereas any other light within the visible spectrum, including the deepest thread, can penetrate to a depth of only three to four millimeters. So we can see that with the NDAG, we have a much deeper penetration depth. So we can reach to the uh, deep vascular lesions in the skin in order to be able to uh, uh, treat them effectively. So this is one of the biggest advantage of the NDAG laser. And this is a nice guide, which is giving us some uh, uh, clues about the parameters to be used in order to treat vascular lesions. So as we can see, when we are treating facial telangiectasia, we can use a spot size of three millimeter. At that time, the fluence will be ranging between 110 up to 160 with a pulse width of 10 to 30 milliseconds. If you are treating fine leg telangiectasia, which are less than 0.5 millimeter in diameter, then we select the spot size according to the size of the vessels 
It can be three, it can be four or five or six, depending on the size. But usually, the smaller the size of the vessel, the smaller the spot size. And then we start to increase the fluence because, uh, 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 sorry, we, we start to decrease the fluence because the, the larger the vessels, then the less fluence we need. So if we are treating small vessels, we need higher fluence. If we are treating larger vessels, then the fluence will decrease because we have significant absorption. And then finally, the pulse duration range should be between 10 to 25 milliseconds according to the size of the vessel again. So if you are treating small vessels, then we would be using 10 milliseconds. If we are using larger, uh, uh, treating larger vessels, then the pulse duration should be longer. Then spider leg veins, which are 0.5 to 1.5 millimeter. Uh, then again, we are using any spot size uh, between three to six milliseconds according to the size of the vessel. We are treating the smaller the vessel, the smaller the spot size. The larger the vessel, the larger the spot size. And then the fluence also is going to be changing according to the size of the vessel. If we treat small vessel, then we need higher fluence. If we are uh, treating larger vessel, then we use less fluence. And the same will happen to the pulse duration, where smaller vessels will need shorter pulse duration, whereas larger vessels will need longer pulse duration. For deep reticular veins, which are one up to 3.5 millimeter, when, especially when they are not bulging, if they are flat, then again, we can use the NDX to treat those reticular veins. Usually in this case, we need a larger spot size, like six millimeter. We need less fluence, so between 80 to 130, usually 120 to 130 is what I'm using, with longer pulse duration, 30 milliseconds, or sometimes above if the skin type is darker. Now, one of the very important things which we have to keep in mind while treating vascular lesions with the ND egg is cooling of the skin. We have to cool the skin very well using cryogen or cold air cooling, depending on your system, as well as cold ice cubes. The cold ice cubes are very important in order to minimize the incidence of purpura uh, or bruises. And this will minimize, if we are able to prevent it, the incidence of hyperpigmentation of the skin because of hemocedrin deposition. So uh, double cooling is always what I do with the, uh, with the use of NDA laser for treating vascular lesions. Uh, we need to tell the patient that we need up to three sessions, from one to three sessions with three weeks interval in order to get rid of about 70% of the veins we treat. These are the expectations. So we do three sessions, three weeks apart, if required. Uh, and this will take care or get rid of about 70% of the veins we treat. We have to instruct the patients not to stand up for a long time after treating leg veins. Otherwise, there will be increased pressure inside the vein and revascularization might happen. Uh, when the patient comes back after three weeks, some of the veins we treated are going to be gone. So they don't need to be treated. Some of the veins are going to be still existing. And if this is the case, we have to examine the vein. If the vein is compressible and disappears when we compress the skin, then it means it's functional still and we can retreat after three weeks. But however, if we squeeze the vein and the vein stays on the skin, does not disappear, then it means that it is a thrombosed vein and we don't need to retreat it. So this is a, a small clinical tip in order to know if you need to treat the vein again or it is thrombosed and we have to wait till uh, it's absorbed by the body. So this is regarding treating the veins. This is some examples uh, uh, where we can treat telangiectasia of the face using the ND egg. As we can see, this is a small telangiectasia. So we are going to be using three millimeter spot we are going to be using 10 millisecond pulse duration and the fluence here might be 150 joule per centimeter square. We expect the veins to disappear with vasospasm immediately upon the impact of the laser. Uh, very good cooling with cryogen or cold air. In addition to that, we need to use uh, cold ice packs or ice cubes. And we can see that in three treatments, most of the veins are gone. In this particular patient, we have to keep in mind that this is a male patient where there is beard and there are some hair follicles, which we need to try to avoid. And we have to let the patient know that some of the hairs uh, exposed to the laser 
might get reduced or maybe it's not going to grow back. So this is uh, a side effect which might happen. The patient should be aware of. While we are treating that particular patient, we have to try to avoid the hair follicles as much as we can because the energy we are using with NDEG is too aggressive for the hair follicles and we don't want to damage uh, the skin. So this is uh, an important clinical tip in this particular patient. This is another, another patient who is having uh, a cherry angioma, a cherry spider veins. And we can see that uh, uh, within one treatment, we can get rid of this uh, spider veins very effectively. Most of it is gone. So we can see that it can be very effective treatment and usually takes one treatment uh, in order to do that. This is another case of facial telangiectasia. And again, we can see that this is before the treatment and this is five weeks after one single treatment. When the skin is fair and the vein is clear like that, then the result is very nice, very dramatic. And we can get rid uh, of that vein usually in one session. Uh, having said that, uh, even if I know that one session is enough, I always prefer to under promise and over deliver. So I tell the patient we need anything between one to three sessions, and then the treatments are going to be done in three weeks interval if required. And this is a case of uh, leg veins where we can see that it is superficial leg veins. So we are going to be using the NDIAG laser. In this case, I would use the four or six millimeter spot. I would use 20 millisecond pulse duration, and the fluence I would use is 140 to 150 joule per centimeter square, and this is how the legs uh, um, are seen after two treatments. So we can see it has been cleared, uh, and um, uh, the patient usually is going to be very satisfied. If we are taking the right parameters, if we are using the right parameters, and we instruct the patient not to stand up after the treatment for three or four days, then the outcome is going to be very good if we are using the uh, cold packs or ice cubes after the treatment immediately to minimize the bruises then the incidence of hyperpigmentation and hemocellular deposition is going to be minimized and this is another case of leg veins uh, in the ankle of the foot so this is the ankle bone and we can see the veins and this is after uh, immediately after the treatment this is what we can see the vasospasm and it disappears and usually it's going to be again one session in this uh, case and uh, the patient usually is very happy with the outcome. So this was regarding the vascular lesions. When it comes to non ablative rejuvenation, the NDIAG laser is one of the most uh, favorite lasers to be used for non ablative rejuvenation because in this application we need to target two chromophores, not one. We need to target the hemoglobin where hemoglobin absorption is used to heat, not to damage the fine upper vascular plexus. So we are using low fluence. And we need to target the water because water absorption used to heat the upper domes. So when we are able to target the hemoglobin and the water, this combination is going to result in stimulation of new collagen production. And if we look at the absorption curves, we'll find that the NDIAG laser is the only wavelength which can target both the hemoglobin and the water. And because of that, all the previous trials for non ablative rejuvenation were not successful because either they were targeting the water only where the hemoglobin was not targeted, or they were targeting the hemoglobin only where the water was not targeted. So that's why the NDIAG is the ideal wavelength to be used for non ablative rejuvenation. And th those are some recommended uh, parameters to be used for uh, non-ablative rejuvenation, where we can use the five or seven millimeter spot. It's very important to use a short pulse duration. It has to be 0.4 or 0.5 millisecond. It has to be less than one millisecond in order to confine the heat into the small micro vessels. And then we are using a fluent ranging between 12 to 14 joule per centimeter square with five hertz. So this means that there will be five pulses per second. So we have to be in painting mode all the time. We have to be uh, uh, moving. We cannot fix the laser spot on one spot in the skin. Otherwise, we can damage the skin. Uh, we There are four important things which we have to keep in mind. Number one, we don't apply anesthesia. 
the anesthesia is not required. The heat is very tolerable. And actually, the heat is a guarding mechanism. So we don't apply topical anesthesia. We, ne we need the patient to uh, feel the heat and let us know if the temperature of the skin goes up too much. We don't use cooling because the objective of this treatment is to increase the temperature of the skin gradually up to 42 degrees and maintain that for three minutes. So if we use cooling, we are counteracting the effect. And then we don't contact the skin. So there is no contact. We are about one to two centimeters away or above the surface of the skin with the distance guide. And we don't apply topical steroids after the treatment. So usually when we see the skin becoming red after the treatment uh, with laser, we apply topical steroids to calm down the skin. But in this case, we need the inflammation because this is uh, the one which will have the fibroblast to synthesize new collagen. So we don't apply topical steroids. This kind of treatment is indicated in all skin types. There is no limitations with the skin type. So even if it is dark skin, we don't have an issue. And usually it's recommended to do three sessions of those uh, parameters, one month apart. So we tell the patient that we need three sessions in order to achieve very good stimulation of collagen. Uh, each session is going to be one month apart. So this was one of the uh, uh, publications which we made uh, in Laser and Surgery and Medicine Journal, which is one of the most distinguished journals in the laser field. It was Our publication was in 2011, and I published that uh, with uh, my colleagues. So this was about uh, uh, the non-ablative scar treatment in dark skin types using the sub-millisecond NDAG laser. And this was a treatment in combination with microdermabrasion. Our photos or our cases were uh, on the cover page of the journal. As we can see, uh, it was very distinguished where we were able to improve the quality of the skin tremendously, even in patients with skin types which are dark, which are challenging to be treated with laser in general. And we can see here how much the texture of the skin improved. This was six, six sessions of microdermabrasion, one week apart, and three sessions of laser, uh, one month apart. So the combination of laser and microdermabrasion was required so that the microdermabrasion can improve the quality of the epidermis and restore the epidermal barrier function, whereas the laser is used to stimulate the collagen uh, and improve the texture of the skin. And this is another patient. So before treatment, we can see the scarring, and we can see three months after uh, six sessions, uh, how much it improved. And this is a higher magnification where we can see the texture of the skin and how much it improved. Acne, active acne is another indication for the same parameters, which are uh, used for non-ablative rejuvenation, where the laser is used in order to sterilize the skin and kill the bacteria by the heating effect. And also the heat is going to lead to shrinkage of the sebaceous glands. So less sebum is going to be produced. So this same parameters and same technique can be used in order to treat the active acne, along with some other procedures like microdermabrasion or keratolytic agents in order to improve the quality of the uh, epidermis and uh, clear the acne. Another good indication which we have been using with, with the NDA laser is treating plain warts. And this was another publication which uh, was uh, conducted by me and some of my colleagues. Uh, treating plain warts uh, with the long pulse NDAG laser, where we treated several patients, uh, 35 cases uh, uh, treated with this. And the conclusion of our study was that the long pulse NDAG laser can be used for treatment of plain warts as an effective, safe method with minimal complications. And we treated several patients uh, with that condition. We know that this is a viral infection. So immediately after the treatment, we can see that the lesion becomes darker when it has color. And then within one month, it's cleared with no recurrence and it's very effective treatment. The parameters we used was 20 to 30 milliseconds, uh, 90 to 110 joule per centimeter square. And we used the smallest spot size, three millimeter spot. And we can see how much the lesion disappeared. Another patient was plain wart, which is skin color. Immediately after the treatment, it becomes a little bit red and uh, edematous but then within one month it disappears. And this is a very good cosmetic outcome with almost no downtime. So uh, it is uh, much better than using ablative lasers or cryocautery or electrocautery, which can leave uh, some marks on the skin or at least hyperpigmentation, which might stay for a few months. 
and this is the patient before and after, and the same parameters used, the NDAC 20 to 30 millisecond, 90 to 110 joule per centimeter square with three millimeter spot, and we can see, uh, and we can see that the skin was uh, cleared uh, very nicely. Another indication uh, which can be uh, used by the NDAC uh, laser is treating warts. Treating warts is a challenge, especially when the wart is multiple, as we can see here. Uh, cryocautery will cause uh, damage to the healthy tissue. Electrocautery is going to leave a wound in each of those marks. And uh, also the ablative lasers can carry risk because the human papilloma virus is present, proven to be alive and present in the plume. So using the NDAG is very effective way it has the advantage that it uh, does not carry the risk of contamination because it just coagulates the tissue, it does not vaporize the tissue, and we can get rid of the warts as effectively as we can see in this photo. So this is eight weeks after three treatments, and we can see that most of the warts have uh, 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 gone, and the parameters we use is 30 milliseconds, 80 joule per centimeter square, and we need to do stacking of pulses till grayish coloration is achieved. So we use uh, the laser with those parameters, which mentioned here, and then we stack the pulses till the tissue becomes a little bit grayish, not too much, uh, so that this will denote a good endpoint in order to uh, uh, have good results uh, of the treatment outcome. So this was regarding the NDAG. When it comes to the Alexandrite, there are three main indications which I would like to highlight today. The hair reduction, where we are using the Alexandrite laser for patients who are having finer hair when the skin type is one to four. This is going to be an excellent indication and the Alexandrite laser would give a very good outcome and very safe at the same time as long as we are using it up to skin type four. The other indication which I will talk about is trichostase spinulosa because this is something we had publication about and we have been using. And finally, epidermal pigmented lesions. Regarding the trichostase spinulosa, we have to use the 0.5 millisecond uh, Alexandrite laser. And we had this publication again in 2011 where we published our uh, um, experience with those patients who are having trichostase spinulosa. So what is a trichostase spinulosa? This is a follicular disorder in which multiple hairs in a keratinous sheath project above the skin surface. So this, those black dots here on the nose, on the tip of the nose, are uh, called the trichostase spinulosa. Another patient who is having that, usually the hair uh, is projecting in the pores and they cause those black dots. Usually it's a cosmetic problem patients are not happy with and there is no good solution for that condition. So the regions resemble open comedons and appear as non-itching, horny, spinous plugs, most often on the nose. And it can be also on the cheeks, trunk, abdomen, and extremities, but the tip of the nose is the most popular site. So this is a patient who is 37 years old, woman, uh, with skin type uh, four, and uh, with only one single treatment with the Alexandrite with 0.5 milliseconds, 15 joules, and five millimeter spot, we can get rid of the lesions. And usually the result is immediate. So we can see that the patients are very happy usually. There is no side effect. The pain is minimal and the result is immediate. So everyone is happy. This is another patient where we can see how much uh, the, the skin cleared immediately after the treatment and this is going to be long term. So the problem is going to disappear maybe for six or eight months. And then if it comes back, then we can do another uh, session and we can see the parameters 0.5 millisecond. This is very important to have this short pulse duration, 17 joule per centimeter square and five millimeter spot. And we can see the outcome. Of course, the pores will not disappear, but the black dots of the trichostase spinulosa disappears and this makes very nice uh, improvement in the appearance of the uh, of the skin another patient 
and we can see again the parameters used. So this is, uh, uh, as we can see, this is immediate response. Finally, the last indication is using epidermal pigmented lesions like solar lentigenes, freckles, age or liver spots, where we have high concentration of melanin in the melanocytes and primarily they are located in the dermoepidermal junction, so superficial. So this is a very good example of patient who is having solar lentigenes and we can see that uh, in one treatment, we can get rid of that with the Alexandrite using the five millimeter spot, 0.5 millisecond and 15 to 25 joule per centimeter square. And usually those are the parameters. Usually we treat skin types up to three or even four with five millimeter spot, 0.5 millisecond, 15 to 18 joules and uh, one hertz. And usually we have to combine the treatment with bleaching agent, sunblock, and we do the treatment next time after three weeks if required. In many cases, one session will be enough. So uh, this is uh, the, the uh, presentation for today. And if there are any, uh, any in the questions, please go ahead and feel free to write any uh, questions or comments. Thanks, Dr. Ashraf, for your great presentation. So now we'll go ahead and take some time for questions. Just a reminder, please be sure to type your questions into the question box in your control panel. Okay, um, the first question is, uh, how many sessions of a treatment for trichostasis uh, spinulosa? Uh, we need, usually it's one session and one treatment is going to be effective and there is no need to repeat it because we are getting the uh, effect immediately and uh, there is no need to repeat it uh, unless when it comes back after six to eight months. All right. So um, this is the, this is the parameters, mm -hmm. yeah, the parameters used are five millimeter spot with 0.5 millisecond and we start with 15 joule per centimeter square. Uh, sometimes we might need to do more than one pass. So we do one pass. If it disappears, then it's good. If not, we do another pass or three passes with uh, minimal cooling of the skin. And this is going to take care of the lesions in most of the cases. And do you use a cooling system when, uh, when do skin rejuvenation procedure? No, for rejuvenation, as I mentioned, uh, the objective is to increase the temperature of the dermis to stimulate an inflammatory reaction. So using the cooling is not required uh, with, the, with the application of the rejuvenation. All right. And what spot size do you use for facial hair removal and body hair removal? For body hair removal, we tend to use larger spot size because usually we need to cover larger area. And in this case, it's going to make sense to use a larger spot size. Uh, for the face, I would like to use a smaller spot size, maybe 10 or 12 uh, millimeter spot, there is no point of using larger spot size in the face. So this is how we go for the spot selection. Having said that, if we are using a certain spot and we felt that the patient is feeling too much pain, mm -hmm. then instead of changing the parameters, I would use a smaller spot size. For example, if I'm working on the face and the patient complained of too much pain, and instead of using less fluence, I would go for a smaller spot size. Instead of 12, I go down to 10. And the same oh. for the body. If I'm using 18 millimeter spot and the patient is feeling too much pain, then I can use uh, a smaller spot size like 15 or 12 with larger repetition rate in order to be able to tr conduct the treatment uh, uh, quickly and with less pain. All right. If I reduce this spot size, uh, should I uh, adjust the parameter, I mean the fluence and uh, no. As well? no. no, because we are using fluence. Fluence means joule per centimeter square. So if I'm using, for example, the Alexandrite laser and I'm using a fluence of 14 joule per centimeter square, whether mm -hmm. I'm using the 20 millimeter spot or the 15 millimeter spot, the fluence should not change because the machine is going to adjust so that what's coming out is 14 joule per centimeter square, regardless which spot size I'm using. All right, uh, the next question is about uh, melasma. So yeah. do you prefer pigmentation treatment or skin rejuvenation procedure for melasma patients? 
actually, for melasma, it is a challenge because we know that once melasma, always melasma. There is no cure for melasma. So I don't want to use too much heat on the skin because heat might stimulate the melano uh, sites to produce more melanin. So I prefer to use other procedures like microdermabrasion, bleaching agent, and so on. But also I can do the rejuvenation because in rejuvenation, we are stimulating the collagen. We are improving the quality and the texture of the skin. Besides, whatever we are doing for the melasma, like bleaching agent and microdermabrasion or something to improve the epidermal barrier function, the outcome is going to be very good and with no risk of darkening the melasma. If I try to use more aggressive procedures like uh, Q-sutured lasers, there is always a risk of darkening of the plasma. So even when we are using the Q-sutured lasers, we can use the laser toning technique with low fluence in order to just try to affect the melasma without too much heat, which can cause uh, worsening of the melasma. Okay. Um, and can a lumpus laser treat warts? Sorry? Uh, can a long pulse laser treat yes. what? Of course, the long pulse in the egg, as I uh, uh, presented, we can mm -hmm. treat the warts uh, with the 20 to 30 milliseconds with the end egg because this can lead to photocoagulation of the uh, uh, infected tissue and kill the virus. So we can get rid of the warts usually in a few sessions, maybe three sessions or so. So mm -hmm. warts is one of the indications of the end egg. Uh, what is the uh, good end point for the wart treatment? For the wart treatment, we would like to see some grayish coloration of the tissue we are treating, of the lesion, because this will indicate photocoagulation. So I do stacking of pulses, maybe two or three or more, till I see grayish coloration of the lesions. This is the end of the questions. Thank you very much for answering all the questions, Dr. Ashraf. My pleasure. It was a pleasure to be um, with you today. I hope it was beneficial and people uh, get some clues and uh, tricks to implement in their practical life. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is any more questions, uh, I think they can be sent to you and you forward it to me. I'll be very happy to answer. Sure, of course. So thanks, Dr. Ashraf, again. Uh, it was a pleasure being with you today. And also, I'd like to thank all the audience who attended today's webinar. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.